in this uh, lecture we will uh, uh, look at um, uh, the methodology for evaluating um, uh, properties of two phase mixtures. Um, even before we actually uh, look at evaluating properties of two phase mixtures, locating the state of a two phase mixture itself uh, uh, needs to be uh, done. In the case of an ideal gas, locating the state given two properties was relatively straightforward if you if you use a PV diagram or any any two independent coordinates. In this case also two independent properties are required. So, we had established that earlier that uh, for a simple compressible substance two independent properties are uh, required to fix the state of the system. But in the case of a uh, system that is actually uh, undergoing phase change or it has uh, two phases liquid and vapor. Uh, we, the process uh, that is uh, in, uh, required to locate the state is a little bit more involved. So, we will uh, look at that first. Okay. So, uh, let us um, uh, start with um, a simple experiment. Uh, this is the so called Andrews experiment. So, basically we have, uh, we have a bath which is maintained at 100 degree Celsius and a piston cylinder mechanism is immersed in the bath. So, the uh, contents of the, uh, uh, the piston cylinder mechanism or the contents of the cylinder which in this case uh, is nothing but water. So, we start with liquid water at first. So, this is always maintained at 100 degrees Celsius. So, what we are what we are planning to do now is conduct this experiment and draw uh, say isotherm uh, corresponding to 100 degrees Celsius on a PV diagram. So, let us say that uh, this is the specific volume and this is the pressure. So, we would uh, we will attempt to draw um, an isotherm in this uh, in this PV diagram isotherm corresponding to 100 degrees Celsius. So, let us say that initially uh, I know the specific volume and I know the pressure. Let us say that the pressure is a relatively high value. Let us say it is um, uh, 20 ampere. Let us say that we denote the initial state like this. So, the pressure is 20 ampere and the specific volume let us say is also known. So, we locate the initial state uh, like this using this uh, uh, cross. Now, um, while, while maintaining the water at 100 degrees Celsius, let us say that we uh, move the piston uh, slowly up. Okay? So, we uh, move the piston slowly up and we uh, notice that as we do this the pressure decreases. But what is interesting is uh, the pressure decreases by a lot even if we move the piston only by a small amount. So, even for small changes in the uh, specific volume of water we notice that the pressure changes a lot. Okay? In other words, uh, the next point uh, may be something like this. So, this is let us say 10 ampa and the specific volume is almost the same uh, just slightly more than what we had before just slightly more. Okay? Now, this happens because the water inside is in a liquid state and you as you all know uh, liquid is any liquid is highly incompressible. So, even for large changes in pressure the change in specific volume is very very small. So, similarly here uh, the pressure changes even for just small pressure changes by a lot or drops by a lot even for small changes in specific volume. So, the next point comes here and we continue to do this. So, we continue to move this, uh, the uh, piston upwards uh, increasing the volume and we continue to notice that even with small increases the pressure uh, uh, decreases by a lot like this. Okay. This continues until we uh, hit a pressure of uh, 100 kilo Pascal. Remember, uh, during this process the water is maintained at 100 degree Celsius. So, when we hit 100 kilo Pascal as we keep moving this piston outwards, eventually we reach a pressure of 100 kilo Pascal and you know that water boils at a pressure of 100 kilo Pascal and 100 degree Celsius. Okay. So, now if I, so this is the point at which we reach 100 uh, kilo Pascal. Now, the water uh, starts to boil if I move it a uh, little bit up. So, if I now move the piston up, I notice that um, some of the water evaporates and occupies the space that is available. So, when I move the piston up a little bit more, some extra space is available now and the liquid, the liquid water, some of it evaporates and the vapor occupies the space uh, above the liquid and below the piston. 
okay as a result of which the water undergoes a change of uh, phase but the pressure remains constant <coughs> the temperature is already being maintained constant as we have mentioned now when the phase change is taking place because this uh, water vapor occupies the space the pressure remains constant so we go from here to here like this if i move the cylinder a little bit more some more water evaporates Notice now that I have to move the, the piston by a finite amount for uh, the water to evaporate. So, we keep going like this. So, some more water evaporates and occupies the space and this goes on until uh, this goes on until we reach a certain point at which all the liquid water has been converted to vapor. Now, the, uh, the cylinder uh, is occupied initially we started with liquid water now we have all water vapor the cylinder is filled entirely with water vapor now if i continue to move the uh, piston outwards uh, decreasing the pressure now the pressure starts to decrease because phase change is complete now the pressure starts to decrease decrease and the vapor uh, behaves just like any um, normal gas well close enough to a normal gas okay so the pressure decreases and the specific volume increases uh, notice that this curve is in contrast to this curve where even small changes in specific volume resulted in large changes in pressure because it was an incompressible liquid here this is a compressible vapor so the expansion process looks more like the familiar expansion of an ideal gas okay so you can notice uh, uh, two um, important things one is let's just uh, highlight this with uh, red one is this point which is the beginning of of evaporation and the other one is this point which is the ending of evaporation In between these two points, the pressure remains constant and the temperature is already being uh, maintained constant. So, notice that as phase change takes place, both pressure and temperature uh, remain constant. So, when phase change takes place, pressure and temperature are not independent properties. They are independent here, they are independent here, but not when phase change takes place. Notice that the isotherm and the isobar corresponding to 100 kilopascal coincide when the phase change takes place. Okay. So, these are important points that we will elaborate uh, on uh, in the next slide. Now, if I um, repeat the experiment, if I repeat the experiment for let us say uh, lower value of pressure, then the curve, uh, the process curve would look something like this. If I repeat it for a lower value of temperature, it would look like this. If I repeat it for a um, uh, higher value of temperature, then the process curve would look something like this. This curve would look something like this. I am sorry, let me re uh, redraw the curve. So, the process curve corresponding to the lower value of temperature would look something like this. So, you can see that um, uh, for, a, for a lower value of temperature, you can see that the phase change, the uh, length of the phase change region or the pro length of the process curve corresponding to phase change is actually longer. And at a higher temperature, you can see that it is becoming shorter. In fact, one can easily visualize that as I keep increasing the temperature, there ought to be a temperature at which this uh, phase change portion. Uh, becomes almost like zero length. There is no uh, discernible phase change. So, we go directly from liquid to vapor. So, that isotherm would look something like this and that temperature is called the critical temperature. So, this is a at the critical temperature, no phase change is discernible. We directly go from the liquid phase to the, um, to the vapor phase. Okay. So, these are important trends that you should remember with respect to the PV diagram. Okay. So, let us look at a nice illustration of the same thing. So, here the red curve was the isotherm that we actually uh, discussed in detail that corresponds to 100 degrees Celsius. Notice that Lm uh, is, uh, is a, uh, a liquid state. So, the water was a liquid uh, during uh, process Lm where uh, even small changes in specific volume resulted in large changes in uh, pressure. 
Mn is the phase change portion of the process curve. When we go from M to N, it is called evaporation. When we go from N to M, it is called condensation. But M uh, denotes either beginning or ending of phase change depending on which direction we are going and N also beginning or ending of phase change depending on which direction we go. But at state M, we always have a liquid which is just about to uh, undergo or just about to finish um, a phase change process. So, uh, state uh, point M, uh, at state point M, the water is in a state called saturated liquid saturated liquid. The word saturated here denotes that phase change is about to begin or about to end. Okay. Similarly, uh, state point N uh, is usually uh, called saturated vapor state. Again, the word saturated denoting that uh, phase change is about to begin or about to end. So, this is saturated liquid, this is saturated vapor. And the states uh, here L to M are usually called compressed liquid or uh, subcooled liquid. We will explain this uh, terminology in a minute, but these are called compressed liquid or subcooled uh, states here to distinguish them from the saturated liquid state. And the state points here along this segment of the, uh, of the isotherm, so these are superheated states. So, we have compressed or subcooled liquid states, we have saturated liquid. Uh, so, we have saturated liquid, we have saturated vapor. In between the two states which lie in between these two uh, are usually called the saturated mixture states. So, it is a mixture of saturated liquid plus saturated vapor. So, it is called a saturated mixture state. So, we have compressed or subcooled liquid saturated liquid, saturated mixture, saturated vapor and then superheated uh, vapor or superheated states. Now, again you can see here that uh, the phase change region is broader for lower temperatures and narrower for the higher temperatures and it is totally absent when the temperature becomes uh, equal to the uh, critical temperature which is 374 degree Celsius for water. Now, we can actually connect all the saturated liquid states. So, that line AC is the locus of all saturated liquid states and line AC is called the saturated liquid line. Okay? So, it is called the saturated liquid line. Similarly, we can connect all the saturated vapor states and if you do that, then you get uh, curve CB which is called the saturated vapor curve. So, this is a saturated liquid line and I am sorry, this is the saturated vapor line. Okay? So, the saturated liquid line and the saturated vapor line uh, delineate beginning or ending of phase change. Okay? So, to the left of the saturated liquid line or compressed liquid states, to the right of the saturated vapor line or uh, to the right of the saturated vapor line, we have superheated vapors and in between the two. So, this uh, dome shaped region that we have here is called the saturated mixture region. So, uh, all saturated mixture states lie uh, within the dome shaped region. Okay, so, we have summarized uh, all this information here. So, saturated liquid state all of them lie on line AC and saturated vapor state all of them lie on line BC. Okay? And the saturated liquid line is line AC that we saw before and saturated vapor line is line BC. We have already seen the critical state also. Now, we look at two new concepts saturation pressure and saturation temperature. Notice that as I already said, the uh, isotherm for 100 degree Celsius and the isobar for 100 kilo Pascal coincide uh, inside the uh, or uh, coincide when phase change takes place or inside the uh, two phase region. Okay? So, the isotherm corresponding to 100 degree Celsius and the isobar corresponding to 100 kappa coincide inside the two phase uh, region. So, um, the pressure of 100 kilo Pascal is usually referred to as the saturation pressure corresponding to 100 degree Celsius. Alternatively, the temperature of 100 degree Celsius is usually referred to as the saturation temperature corresponding to 100 kilo Pascal. So, we look at the isotherm and isobar which coincide inside the uh, two phase region and the pair has a special name. So, saturation pressure and saturation temperature. 
So, saturation pressure denoted P sat is the pressure at which phase change takes place for the given temperature T. So, for the given temperature T, there is an isobar P sat which coincides with the with this isotherm inside the two phase region. That isobar, the pressure corresponding to that isobar is called the saturation pressure. Similarly, saturation temperature, temperature at which phase change takes place for the given pressure P. So, for the given pressure P, we uh, look at the isotherm which coincides with the isobar corresponding to the given pressure inside the two phase region and that temperature is called the saturation temperature. Okay? Now, compressed or subcooled region lies to the left of the saturated liquid line. The important thing about these states is that for a given pressure and temperature, notice that pressure and temperature are independent in the uh, subcooled or compressed liquid region or in the superheated region. So, uh, P and T are independent here, P and T are independent here, but P and T are not independent inside the dome region. Okay? So, so, the given P and T is such that P is greater than the saturation pressure corresponding to the temperature or <clears throat> the temperature, given temperature is less than the saturation temperature corresponding to the given pressure, which is why it is either called a compressed liquid state because P is greater than P sat. So, it is compressed beyond the saturation pressure. So, it is called a compressed liquid state or since T is less than the corresponding saturation temperature, it is called a subcooled state. So, it is either called a compressed liquid state or a subcooled liquid state. That is where the uh, name comes from. Superheated region as we already mentioned lies to the right of the saturated vapor line and the dome shaped region encloses all two phase mixture states. So, these are some important concepts that you should remember. Now, um, uh, what we will try to do is uh, having this diagram in mind, we will try to do uh, two things. Number one, how do we locate a given state in a diagram like this and how do we calculate properties corresponding to the given state? That is what we are going to do next. Now, as I said, two independent properties are required to fix a state of a uh, simple compressible substance. It can be PV as we saw before or it can also be TV. Okay? So, you can see that isobars on a TV diagram look like this. There is also a portion of isobar here which I have not indicated for the sake of clarity. So, the isobars actually continue like this. So, you should know uh, PV diagram what an isotherm uh, looks like or how an isotherm looks on the PV diagram. TV diagram and how uh, an isobar looks on the PV on the TV diagram. So, you should be able to use both TV, PV and TV uh, coordinates comfortably and later on we will also be using uh, so called TS coordinates where S is the specific entropy. So, that is also introduced later on and that is very helpful for illustrating certain types of uh, ideas. Okay? So, let us now move on to locating states. So, we are given uh, 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 the pressure at 250 kilo Pascal temperature 200 degree Celsius and we have to locate the state. Since we are given pressure and temperature, we presume that these are independent and so the state is either a compressed or subcooled liquid state or a superheated state. That is, uh, that is what we understand from this. Now, how do we determine where, uh, which side uh, the state given state falls in? We need tabulated data for this purpose and uh, or steam tables for this purpose and let us see what the uh, uh, what this looks like. So, here is the property table for water. We also have a similar table for uh, refrigerant R134A. So, as you can see uh, here it is uh, this is the uh, temperature table. So, we basically have uh, three tables associated with water. One is the temperature table, so called temperature table. Next one is the so called pressure table and then we have the superheated table. Okay? We do not have a uh, separate set of tables for compressed liquid states. The reason will become clear. For this uh, uh, sort of course, you know compressed liquid tables are not required. Okay? Now, table A if you see 
looks like this. So, this is called the temperature table because uh, the first column here is temperature and it goes in equal increments of uh, temperature. So, you can see that starting from 0 0.01 degree Celsius, uh, it goes all the way up to the critical temperature which is 374.12. Now, what does it give? So, for each, uh, for, uh, if you take any temperature, uh, for the given temperature, you can see that the second column gives the saturation pressure corresponding to the temperature. And we have pairs of columns, this is specific volume, this is specific internal energy, specific enthalpy and specific entropy. Quantities here are denoted with a subscript F or subscript G. Uh, in the early days, subscript F referred to fluid and subscript G referred to gas. Okay? We now understand subscript F to be saturated uh, liquid and G to be saturated vapor. Okay. So, V f here is a specific volume corresponding to the saturated liquid at that temperature and V g is a specific volume corresponding to the saturated vapor at that temperature that is 10 degree Celsius is what we have highlighted and similarly for specific internal energy, specific enthalpy and so on. Okay. Now, if I go to pressure table, it gives the same information, but instead of having equal increments of temperature, we now have pressure in the first column and this goes in equal increments of pressure more or less. Okay. Now, the second column, so if I take any uh, pressure, the second column here gives the saturation temperature corresponding to that pressure. And again, saturate, uh, specific volume of saturated liquid, specific volume of saturated vapor and so on. So, both these present the same data. One gives it in increments of uh, uniform increments of temperature, other one gives in uniform increments of pressure. So, that the data in the two tables interleave like this and give you a comprehensive uh, coverage of the entire uh, two phase region. Okay? Now, uh, the um, given uh, value, if you recall, we were asked to locate the state corresponding to 250 kappa and 200 degree Celsius. Okay. So, uh, let us first use the pressure table and then uh, see what we get. So, from the pressure table corresponding to 250 kappa which is 2.5 uh, bars. So, 2.5 bar. So, we go into the table at 2.5 bar. The saturation temperature is 127.4 degree Celsius. Okay. And that is what we have written here. So, saturation temperature corresponding to uh, 200 kappa is 127.4 degree Celsius. Okay, now, how do we use this information to locate the state? This is what we do. Uh, so, let us do it. Uh, so, let me just sketch it roughly here and then we will look at this diagram. So, let us say that this is your PV diagram. And let us say that the given pressure 250 kilo Pascal the isobar corresponding to 250 kilo Pascal is like this. So, what we try to do now is try to get the isotherm which coincides with this isobar inside the two phase region that is the saturation temperature corresponding to 250 kappa. We have located from the steam tables that the saturation temperature corresponding to 250 kappa is 127.4. So, let us uh, now uh, draw the isotherm. So, this is 127.4 degrees Celsius. Notice that it coincides with the isobar inside the two phase region. Now, the given temperature 200 is 200 degrees Celsius. So, we know that the isotherm corresponding to 200 degrees Celsius will be above this uh, isotherm. So, let us uh, draw that qualitatively. We have already seen that the uh, So, this is 200 degree C. So, the given state 250 kilo Pascal and 200 degree Celsius lies at the point of intersection of these two here. So, that means that uh, state lies in the superheated region. 
ok. That is what is illustrated in this diagram here. So, we drew the isobar corresponding to 250 kpop, then we identified the isotherm which coincides with this isobar in the two phase region that is the saturation temperature corresponding to 250 kpa. We retrieved it to be 127.4. So, now we know that the isotherm corresponding to 200 degree Celsius lies above this. So, the point of intersection of 250 kpa and 200 degree Celsius is state A and that is superheated. That is one way of uh, locating the state. The alternative way is to use the temperature table ok. Let us see how that is done. We are given that uh, P is 250 and uh, K point T is 200 degree Celsius. Let us now go to the temperature table. So, corresponding to 200 degree Celsius, so we go inside the table with the 200 degree Celsius, the uh, saturation pressure is 15.55 bar. So, let us uh, now use this information to locate the state. So, from the temperature table, we retrieve the uh, saturation uh, pressure to be 1555 kilopascal. So, how do we use this information now? We do the following. So, let us say that this is our PV coordinate. So, we have the isotherm at 200 degree Celsius. Let us say this is our isotherm at 200 degree Celsius. So, the isobar that coincides with this uh, uh, with this isotherm is the saturation pressure corresponding to 200 degree Celsius that is 1555 that is 1555 kpa. So, the given pressure 250 kpa is less than this value. So, that means the isobar corresponding to 250 kpa will look like this. So, the point of intersection of 250 kpa and 200 degree Celsius lies over here and that is in the superheated region and that is shown in this diagram. So, you can see that. So, this is the isotherm corresponding to 200 degree Celsius. The saturation pressure is 1555. This is the isobar corresponding to 250. Remember, this sketch is not to scale. It is qualitative. And the point of intersection of this isobar 250 kpa and the isotherm 200 degree Celsius lies in the superheated state. Okay. Now, let us move on to the next example. So, here we are given the pressure to be, I mean we have been given the pressure uh, to be 1000 kpa, and the temperature to be 140 degree Celsius. So, now let us go to the pressure table. 1000 kPa and 140 degree Celsius. 1000 kilo Pascal corresponds to 10 bar. So, we go to the pressure table 10 bar and the saturation temperature corresponding to 10 bar is 179.9 degree Celsius. So, let us uh, go through this process one more time. P V 1000 uh, kilo Pascal. So, this is the isobar corresponding to 1000 kilo Pascal. We just retrieved the uh, saturation temperature corresponding to 1000 kilo Pascal to be 179.9. So, that is the isotherm that coincides with this isobar inside the two phase region. The given temperature is 140 degree Celsius. So, the isotherm corresponding to 140 will be below this isotherm. So, the isotherm corresponding to uh, this 140 degree Celsius will be like this. So, this is 140 degree Celsius. So, uh, the uh, point of intersection, so the point of intersection of uh, 100 kilo Pascal and 140 degree Celsius lies here which is in the subcooled or compressed liquid state. So, that is illustrated in this diagram here. So, we can see that here. So, this is 1000 kilo Pascal, this is the isobar corresponding to 1000 kilo Pascal, this is the isotherm corresponding to the saturation temperature for 1000 kilo Pascal 179.9. The given isotherm lies below this, so it looks like this and the point of intersection of 140 degree Celsius and 1000 lies in the compressed liquid or subcooled liquid region. Okay.
we can uh, repeat this uh, from the temperature table. So, if you go to the temperature table, we can uh, retrieve the saturation pressure corresponding to 140 degree Celsius as 361.2. Let us just quickly take a look at that. So, let us go to the temperature tables. So, 140 degree Celsius is here and the saturation pressure is 361.2 kilopascal. 361.2 kilopascal. So, you can see that. So, this is the isotherm corresponding to 140 degree Celsius and the saturation pressure is 361.2. The given uh, pressure 1000 kilopascal, the isobar corresponding to that lies above 361.2 looks like this. So, the point of intersection of the given uh, isotherm 140 degree Celsius and the isobar 1000 kilopascal rise in the compressed liquid region. So, this is how we use the, uh, the steam tables to locate the state. Whether the state is uh, in the superheated region uh, or compressed liquid region or in the mixed region has to be determined using the steam table. Once we have determined that property evaluation comes next. Okay? The table has to be used even for locating the state. Okay? But the, the clue is if you are given P and T, then you may presume that P and T are independent, which means that the given state will lie in the either in the compressed or subcooled liquid region or in the superheated region. Okay? That is the important thing. So, here we have been given uh, P and T. So, we know to begin with that it must be either here or here. The state must lie in one of these two places.